Um, and I'll set up from the current slide. And if it'll set up from the current slide, there it goes. All right. <laughs> Uh, let me explain a little more of what's going on. I think we went through this in gory detail on Monday. Uh, but just to remind you, I can't remember if you were here when I was talking about it. You probably were. Um, this week is almost, it's been the weirdest week I think I've ever had as far as trying to get everything done for classes and stuff. Ah, right, here comes Andy. So I'll wait until he gets in. Okay, so Andy's here. So we tell the even numbers here, two and four are here. We're looking for the odds, one and three. Of course, those odd people, you know, well, never mind. Okay. Um, so, don't know, Andy, can you hear me yet? Yes, sir. Okay, good deal. I was just starting to give him another sad, sad song here. Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, this morning I had two hours of office hours supposedly most of those two hours were spent with uh, dealing with Judy's memorial service her cleaning out her apartment contacting people who needed to know fortunately or unfortunately it's sort of sad we found out somebody associated with our one of the church's ministries had a fire last Monday lost 90% of everything so they can probably use a lot of what's there uh, I have very little time I can help with it, but I'm going to get them on the list as people who can help clean it out. So, and I, but, so most of my two hours this morning, I got a little bit done this morning, but not much for school, but lots of things done for the other things. And um, this afternoon from four to six, I will be at Episcopal Place meeting with the guy who's volunteered to help from the church and with a guy who's involved with that ministry that the woman's a part of so so maybe we'll get some things taken care of today but there goes basically my office hours this afternoon okay now tomorrow I I think I knew this is uh, tomorrow and Thursday I mean tomorrow and Friday I'm out okay I've had an infusion tomorrow morning starting at 7 <laughs> It means I have to be at the clinic probably 6.45ish or so, or leave here anyway by 6.45ish or so, uh, to get there. Um, and it'll, they said about eight hours, so that gets me till three o'clock. If I finish that time or earlier, I'll rush home and I have a 3.15 class. So I'm hoping to be able to work on that 3.15, you know, meet with the 3.15 class tomorrow afternoon. No guarantees, but that's it. So there goes my office hours that are normally 1 to 3 on Thursday. They're gone. Friday, I'm usually in the office 8 to 12. Actually longer, but officially 8 to 12. I have an infusion Friday, 8.15 to and at least 8 hours. So <laughs> probably 4 or 5 o'clock, okay? Uh, they'll shut it down sometime around 5 just because they want to go home for the weekend. So uh, I think I'll be home, but I... May not be in any shape too much because they give you Benadryl and stuff like this that absolutely knocks me out. So uh, the rest of this week is sort of trashed. Now, I don't know if you will hear it in the background or not, but we live in an old house, a 1930s house, uh, and with an old house comes the usual situation. They added a bathroom upstairs sometime in the distant past. And when they did it, they didn't put it in, well, they had to tie into ex existing septic, which they didn't have anything up here. And to keep from doing much damage, there's very little slope in the septic line, and it tends to get stopped up. And this is the third time the poor old guy's been out here trying to figure out what's going wrong. It had been almost a decade since we'd had a problem, but now we're having them again. So if you hear something in the background, that's him uh, trying to clear our lines. Now, I haven't heard him lately, so maybe he's through. I don't know. Um, then, today's also the day our cleaning lady comes every other week. And so she may be coming in, so you may be hearing something from that. So, when it rains, it pours. So, 
hopefully that won't be too distracting for class. All right, any questions, problems, issues, concerns that you want to bring up before I get going today? Um, I will try to get some grading done tomorrow and Friday. Uh, usually I'm there waiting for an hour or more while they get everything set up, ready for the setting up, getting the infusion going. Um, they start off with, uh, yeah, I don't know what order, but Tylenol and Benadryl and steroids and things like this to minimize the reaction because monoclonal antibodies are developed in rats or other animals like that so they try to minimize any reaction you may have so that's why I take all that stuff so while they're setting me up and setting all that up and they have to let that get into my system for a while so I usually have at least about an hour or so maybe longer and I'm going to try to grade papers all the time I have uh, Thursday and Friday up until the Benadryl knocks me out and then once that's done I doubt if I'll have much more opportunity to do maybe I will maybe I won't so I'll try to get some work done Thursday and Friday but I'll basically not be reachable I'm gonna carry my computer and my cell phone but usually uh, getting access is really really difficult the Kirkland Clinic is made mostly of steel you know you know reinforcing and stuff like that that blocks a lot of signal there's so much electronic equipment in there that blocks a lot of signal and there's supposed to be a you know, hospital provides a Wi-Fi that you can a public Wi-Fi you can get on but quite often everybody in the world trying to get on it and the signals not that strong and the bandwidth's not that wide so quite often I can't get on that either so I may be completely incognito. I may be able to get on if I'm lucky. So basically tomorrow and Friday, I'm out of pocket. I'll be hopefully back here in time for my 315 class, but then I'll be tied up in my class the rest of the day. So that's, <laughs> that's where the rest of this week is going. And uh, so see none of you are in any of my other classes Tuesday Thursday classes so that won't affect you any. all right let's get on to we're in chapter 8 integration techniques and improper integral we're going to focus on integration techniques okay 8.2 is integration by parts that's the first of the major techniques a really important one one you'll use a lot the objective here pretty simple find an antiderivative using this technique integration by parts okay in this section you'll study an important technique integration by parts the technique is used can be applied to a wide variety of functions and it's particularly useful for integrands involving products of algebraic and transcendental functions now for some reason zoom is doing something different today I can't see my picture, I can't see either of your names. So let me just make sure. Are y'all able to hear me? Okay, and you're able to see the uh, PowerPoint, right? Okay. Now, what I don't know. Okay, you said you can or cannot see the PowerPoint. Oh, you can't. Well, that may be the issue. Okay, because I don't know what happened to Zoom. So let me see if I can get Zoom to reconnect here. Okay, that was the problem. Okay, there we go. Now you can see it, right? And now I can see me and you, your names. Okay, I don't know why it lost everything there, but it did. Okay, now I've got to move things around. I knew I hadn't had to do this. I guess I got to talking about other things and wasn't paying attention when whatever happened, happened. All right, uh, let's go from current slide. Um, okay, now do y'all need to go back and see the previous ones? Oh, wait, 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 wait. There's someone trying to come in. I think it's Jordan. 
Okay. Let me get Jordan here. So one of the odds are here. Well, he didn't come in. Now we did. So Jordan will be coming in shortly. He's connecting to audio now. I'll let him get connected. All right. Jordan, we off to a slow and rough start this morning, but we're here. Okay, let me back up one more slide here. Okay. Okay. Jordan, just for your information, I think you may have heard this all on Monday, but in case you didn't, uh, my office hours this morning were almost shot taking care of all this other stuff I'm having to do with the memorial service and my friend's death and all that kind of stuff. I can't do this outside of office hours because the people I'm dealing with are not in their office then. <laughs> so uh, now this afternoon at four, I'm supposed to have office hours from four to six. I've got to be at Episcopal Place, meet with uh, the guy from church who's going to be helping some and a guy from one of the ministries at church who may be needing some of the uh, stuff for one of their, uh, you might say, clients or whatever, uh, because she had a fire in their home and lost about 90% of everything. So they may be getting as much as they can out of there. Not necessarily today, but just seeing what they can use. Um, so when it rains, it pours. It just keeps coming. I don't know if someone else is trying to come in. I don't think so. Um, so I'll be out of pocket basically from four to six a day when I normally have office hours. Tomorrow I have an infusion starting at seven in the morning. So I'll be out of pocket at least until around, I hope I'll be home by three, but then I'll be starting my 315 class. So I will not be available then either. That goes until 745 or so. Maybe we won't go quite that late because uh, I'm not sure I'll have the lab prepared for them then, but we'll see. And then on Friday, I'm back at the clinic for another infusion. That will be from 8.15 until probably 4 or 5 o'clock. So I'm out of pocket all day Friday as well. Hopefully next week, we'll be back to normal, whatever normal is now. Okay. I may still have to be dealing with some stuff like that. Uh, for instance, got something in the rules for what we have to do in move out procedure and what I'm responsible for and all that kind of stuff. Hopefully, uh, I will, the Episcopal Place, I think, is going to work with us on that and probably do a lot of that for us. I sure hope so anyway. Okay. So anyway, it's been crazy. So where we are today, we're starting in chapter, or we're in chapter eight, in integration techniques and proper integrals. We're mostly on the integration techniques now. 8.2 starts those techniques. 8.1 was just a general review of all of our uh, procedures from before, basic integration rules, and we did that last time, and I think we, uh, sure hope we finished everything, I believe we did, uh, last time. Uh, is that your memory, that we finished 8.1? Okay, good. So 8.2 is the first of these special techniques. All those others were things that we can use to help, but this is integration by parts. One and simple objective, find an antiderivative by using integration by parts. Okay, and this is what we're saying. The technique is integration by parts, can be used in a wide variety of functions, particularly useful for integrands involving products of algebraic and transcendental functions. Okay, if you don't remember what transcendental functions is, the E's and the logs and those kind of things. Okay, so for instance, integration by parts works well for integrals such as this. A product of a polynomial, X, and a transcendental function, log X. Try as you might, you're not going to get a, uh, now something just beeped, I don't know what that was. Okay. I don't think anyone's trying to come in. Uh, I don't believe you'll find a, a U substitution that'll work with this or just about anything else. I don't know. But integration by parts works very nicely. This one, polynomial again times a transcendental function. Try like you might, 
no substitution or anything else is going to get you through that one either. Here we have a product of a transcendental function and a trig function. Believe it or not, hey, no other technique that I know of will work. Integration by parts will work. Okay, we'll talk about what to look for. And there's another sound. Do y'all know what those sounds are? It may be I'm getting emails. I don't know what it is, but it's aggravating that it keeps doing that. Okay, y'all may, may not be able to hear it, but it's aggravating to me. Okay, so integration by parts is based on your good old product rule. D by dx, or as my Indian friends used to say, d by dx, okay, of the product of u times v is u times the deriv derivative of v plus v times the derivative of u. Y'all remember the product rule, right? Or another way to express it, u times v prime plus v times u prime, where prime means derivative with respect to x. Both u and v have to be differentiable functions of x. Now, how does that help in an integration? Well, here's how. If, remember we had products of functions, if one of those functions was a nice differentiable function u and v was a nice integrable function v, okay, uh, or maybe they weren't very nice, okay, but these were, okay, or vice versa. These were nice and those were not, okay. What you can do is then take the one that's difficult and subtract the one that's easy from this one, okay. It's easy to integrate this. That's a perfect derivative. That's just going to be u times v. And here, if this one was easy to integrate, integrate that. You got it. And then that gives you the integration for that. The difference between this one and the easy one will give you that hard one. That's the premise. Okay. Now they're going to go into it a little bit more. And here's what they say. If u and v are functions of x and have continuous derivatives, not just their differentiable, but continuous derivatives, then if this is that hard function, the integral of u times dv, and you can't think of any way to do it, then what we do is decide what that v is, okay, we'll show the technique in a minute, and then u times v minus the integral of v du. If this is easier to do, and you can integrate this, then that gives you a way to integrate this thing that's very difficult or impossible to integrate without this technique. Okay, it's a lot of blah blah blah. Okay, a little bit more blah 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 here. Okay, is that someone coming in? I don't see it. Okay, the formula expresses the original integral in terms of another integral, okay? Now, it depends on the choice of u and dv, okay? All you got in the integral are product of two functions. What you want to do is say, is one of these something that is going to be hard to integrate, but I can differentiate, but this one over here, if I treat that as an integral, is that easy to integrate and figure out what the, the function would be? It may be easier to find the second integral than the original one. And that's what I was talking about. If this one's easier to integrate than that one, do it this way. If it's not, move this over there and this over here and do it that way. Okay. Sometimes you might have to do several steps of it. That's okay. We'll see that. Okay. Because the choices of u and dv are critical in the integration by parts process, here are the guidelines they provide. Now, I'll read you theirs, and then I'll probably paraphrase it the way I like to think of it. Try letting dv be the more complicated portion of the integrand that fits a basic integration rule, and otherwise something you can integrate. Okay? Then u will be the remaining factor of the integrand, and what you wind up doing is differentiating it. But remember, it's a differentiable function. Okay, so what we do is try u 
letting you be the portion of the integrand whose derivative is a function simpler than you itself. That's a key. Most of the time when you take a derivative, it gets a little easier. Not always, but most of the time. The dv, remember that's the more complicated part. If that is something you can integrate, and the v doesn't get any more complicated than the dv was to begin with, then you're making progress. Notice that dv always includes the dx in the original integrand, and we'll talk about that once we do an example. Okay, a few more blah blah blahs. Okay, here comes phone message after phone message after phone message. It was like this yesterday too. As soon as I started teaching, here they came. They will have to wait until this afternoon. Okay, <laughs> done. Okay. When using integration by parts, note that you can choose dv or first choose u. It doesn't matter. Okay. After you choose, however, the choice of the other factor is determined. It must be the remaining portion of the integral, integrand. Also note that dv must contain the differential dx that we already mentioned before of the original integral. All this blah, blah, blah. Finally, we get to do it. Okay. Now, I'm going to get my handy dandy pad here and pen and we'll work through this. Now, goodness gracious, this just keeps making noise and noise. Twelve more messages just came in. Okay. I can't stand it. I wish I didn't have to have the iPhone up here in the office at all. I wouldn't even know it's ringing. It's just irritating. Okay. Here's our product. If I could get my pen turned over. We got an X times an E to the X. Okay. Now, here's the good news, folks. Whether you integrate or differentiate e to the x, it stays e to the x. So that doesn't get any more complicated. Okay? That's the key. The x, if we take a derivative of it, it gets simpler. If we integrate it, it gets more complicated. So we want this to be the u, because we're going to take a derivative of it. We want this to be the dv, because it's not going to get any worse when we integrate. Does that make sense? Okay. So it starts off as if it is a U substitution. It's not quite, but it's similar. So we start off with let U equal X. The one that gets simpler when you take a derivative. Okay. Then DV is going to be what remains and that has to include the dx e to the x dx okay now then you turn this around then as you always when you have a let then du is equal to just simply dx okay because the derivative of x is dx integrate this one What's the antiderivative of e to the x dx? It's just v. Goodness, they keep ringing. Okay. Maybe they'll quit. Twelve more messages came in just like that. Okay. Now, if you integrate this, you get e to the x. Now, at this point, don't put a plus c here. We'll worry about that later, okay? Just do, pick out which one you want to be u, the one that's going to get simpler when you differentiate it, and pick out the v, the one that, the dv, that won't get more complicated when you integrate it. And that certainly fits the bill. Okay, what does the rule say then? This integral here then is going to be first, the product of u times v and that was your x e to the x you don't have to do another thing to it that's it u times v minus the bottom line here and that the integral of the bottom line that be integral of e to the x 
dx. And guess what? That is way simpler to integrate than that was. Okay? So our answer is x e to the x, the uv part, minus, and of course, what's the antiderivative of e to the x dx? e to the x. And here is where you put your plus c because that was the indefinite integral. That's it, folks. That's all. Now, actually, if you wanted to make that e to the c rather than c, that would have been all right, too. Then you could probably combine some of those. But that's it. That's, that's as far as you need to go. Let's see if that's how the book did it. Yep, that's how they left it. x e to the x minus e to the x plus your constant c. Okay? Now, going to erase my scratch here. Any questions on it before I erase it? Do you see the steps? Okay. So I'm going to erase that. Let's see how they proceed. To apply integration by parts, you need to write the integral in the form of the integral of u dv. Okay. Frankly, it's already in that form. Okay. But let's see what they mean by that. And here comes another ding. I bet you it's emails coming in because I'm not answering the phone. Let it ding. Okay. There are several ways to do this. You could have the u be the x and the dv e to the x dx. That's what we did. You could have had the u be the e to the x and the dv be x dx. Or you could have had the u be 1 and the dv be x e to the x dx. That really gets you nowhere. Or you could have had the u be x e to the x and the dv be dx be dv. Frankly, these two just produce exactly the same thing you have up there. So that makes these two, to me, make no sense at all even to bother writing down. Here are the two obvious choices. Now, there will be times when you'll do something like this. Very special functions. Not in this case. Now, look at this. You take the derivative of e to the x, you get e to the x. No problem. Okay? But when you integrate this one, you get x squared over 2. And that's more complicated than x, right? So that's not the good choice. This one, take a derivative, you get dx. Integrate this, you get e to the x. No more complicated than what we've got here. We'll live with that one. That's the one we chose, and that's the one they chose. The guidelines for integration by parts in the earlier slide suggest the first option, this one right here, uh, because the derivative u equal x is simpler than x. Derivative of x is dx, okay? And the antiderivative of dv is, that's the most complicated portion, true, but it fits a, basic, fits a basic integration formula that's going to be e to the x. So it gets, it may not get simpler, but it doesn't get more complicated. Okay, so we go with the first one. So the dv is e to the x dx. I usually list the u first. So if you integrate that, integrate e to the x dx, you get e to the x. That is your v. Hang on to that. You'll need it. I'm trying to see if someone was trying to come in. I don't see them. Let me just check down here and make sure. Nope, I don't see anyone there either. Okay. Now, excuse me a minute. Let me get something to drink. I've been... going so fast and furious today. I'm already tired. Well, I'm anemic or two, so y'all know that. Okay. Oh, we lost. Uh, yeah, there, Andy's back. All right. That's interesting. I don't know how we lost you, Andy, and you came back. I didn't have to let you back in. That's You must be sneaky there. Okay. Uh, at least we lost you here. It didn't show up there anymore. All right, so this is how you get your V. That's important. Okay. Now it won't advance for some reason. 
All right, your u, pretty simple, u is equal to x, du is dx. That's pretty easy. Usually I start with that and then go to the dv. They start with the dv and go to the u. Doesn't matter. So what do you do with this? Your original integral, the integration by part produces this. That original integral, which is what you had, is the product of the functions u times v. u is the x, v is the e to the x. Minus the integral of the v, e to the x, times du, which is dx. And that is quite integrable. So that's what you get. This one, which there's no way to integrate that by substitution or any other means that we talked about, our basic integration rules, integration by parts produces x e to the x, that's your uv, minus the integral of this part here, e to the x dx. Okay? And when you do that, you see now your second integral, this integral, it's much easier to do. That one was impossible to do, except by integration by parts. So that's going to be x e to the x minus e to the x, and then you put your plus c at the end. No reason to put it up here, okay? Don't put it there. Wait until the end, put your plus c there. Any questions on example one? Okay, to check this, differentiate this, See if you come back with the original integrand, this thing right here. And I think you will, because this is a product rule. x times e to the x plus e to the x minus e to the x plus e to the x minus e to the x adds to 0. Remember, c is 0. You have x e to the x. Yep, that's what you started with. So we feel good about it. Okay. Uh, hold on a moment here. I'm going to need to turn on my ceiling fan. It's beginning to get a little stuffy in here. Uh, so hang on just a moment here. I'm kind of old and slow. Okay. All right. I'm hearing my dog downstairs, and that either means the rotor motor man is leaving or the... Oh, wait, here comes somebody in here. I believe it is, oh, it's Andy again. That time I did have to let him in. But I can't see that he's coming in yet. There he is. He's back. All right. As you gain experience in using integration by parts, so it seems like that may be too high a speed. Let me cut it down one more. Okay. I hope that'll work. Okay. As you gain experience by practicing, practice, 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 uh, using integration by parts, your skill in determining who's you and who's DV, that will get better, increase. The next summary, which I think is coming up, Goodness gracious, where in the world are they? Wow. They've just checked, uh, skipped example two, example three, example four, example five, and example six. Okay. Hey. Okay, Andy, I think your microphone's on. Okay. No problem. Okay. So let's hold off on this slide a moment and go back and do, oh. My dog's outside, so that must mean the cleaning lady got here. I hope so anyway. <laughs> Else that the dog broke out. I don't know. But she's okay. I can't get it to back up. Okay. So let's pick up and do example two. We'll go to our whiteboard. So now we're going to get some of that practice in they were talking about. Okay. I'm going to move this taskbar that you can't see out of the way. I've already moved us as far over to the left as I can. So I'm going to move the whiteboard as far right and up as I can to give me maximum white space to write. OK. 
Okay, still not there. Okay, just about there now. Okay, that's about it. Okay, I've still got that black rectangle there. I don't know why they put that in there, but here we go. So, here we have our next integral. The integral of x squared times the log of x dx. Okay, any of you want to integrate that by brute strength, use substitution, anything else you can think of, don't even try. No way you can integrate that except possibly integration by parts. What gives that away? It's a product. A product is this function times that function. Now, the question is, when I integrate this function, it'll get more complicated, x cubed over 3, okay? Uh, so that's usually not a good idea. If I differentiate it, it gets a little simpler, okay? 2x dx, right? So that looks like one we might want to use as our u. This one, when I take a derivative of it, it goes 1 over x. That really is simpler. But I'm not even sure I know how to integrate e to the x, uh, log x. So I don't think I can do that to be my dv. I think that's going to have to be my u. Okay? Because I can differentiate it. I don't know that I can integrate that. Okay? So this is sort of backwards from what they said. Okay? And what I usually say. In this one, we're going to let the u function be this one, the log x. Why? Because we can take a derivative of it. Now that makes the one that gets worse because you see, I can't even integrate this. So that's going to be a lot worse. So our dv is now going to have to be x squared dx. Remember the d's have to go together. Okay. Well then, we take a derivative, du, and what I just said, y'all remember what the derivative of log x is? Anybody? One over x dx. Okay. The v, on the other hand, when I integrate this, it does get a little worse, and that becomes uh, x cubed over 3. Don't mess with the plus c there. That's it. All right? Now, what's your answer then? That was the setup. How do you write down? You write down the product of u times v. So that's going to equal to 1 third x cubed log x. Okay. It may look complicated, but guess what? We don't have to integrate it. It's integrated. It's done. That's part of your answer. Minus the integral of the bottom line down here. Now, here's where things get interesting. This x will divide into one of those, leaving you an x squared. Okay. Now, it's going to have a one-third in it. So, this is going to be one-third. Okay. And all we have left is x squared dx. There's your dx. There's the x squared. I pulled the one-third out. x squared dx. But guess what? We can integrate that. That's just a power rule. There's no log in it messing it up anymore. We can do that. Okay? So let's do it. This will be... Now, actually, we could pull both of the one-thirds out. So let's do that. One third. This will be x cubed log x minus, I've already pulled the one third out, what's the antiderivative of x squared? Well, we just did it a little bit ago. That's x cubed over 3. Increase that by 1 and divide by that new thing. Okay? 
Now, looks like to me we can pull a one-third x cubed out of both terms. Okay? And that would leave us with log x minus one-third. Now, I doubt if they write the answer that way. And then remember to put your plus c in there. Okay? Now, you can write it that way. I imagine they're going to leave it like this, but I'm just guessing. One-third x cubed log x minus one-ninth x cubed plus c. Probably one of those two answers. Let's see what they did. Maybe neither one of them. Okay. Okay. I can't even follow their... Oh, oh. I was looking at their checking. Okay. Um... X, they put x cubed over 3 log x, that's perfectly fine. Minus x cubed over 9, that's perfectly fine, plus c. Yeah, same answer. Uh, but just another example of why I don't like WebAssign. Because if they were looking for this answer, x cubed over 3 log x minus x cubed over 9 plus C, if they were looking for that and only that answer, they would have told you this answer is wrong, that answer is wrong. There's nothing wrong with either one of those answers. They're just as simple form as the last one. It's just how the computer was set up to read it. And guess what? It's dumb. It's not artificial intelligence. It's no intelligence. Okay? It's just looking for one and one only answer. So, if you like WebAssign and you're used to that, go for it, okay? You spend a lot of your time, okay, did I do something wrong or is this just in a different form than what they're looking for? So, I would have probably spent another two or three minutes or more trying to figure out, okay, I know my, I think my answer is right, but what's, what's wrong? Let me try it this way. Let me try it that way. Finally, maybe I would have hit on this. It would have just been frustrating. Now, what they like to do is turn around and differentiate this answer and see if you get the original integrand. We really don't have time to do it, but it's a good practice to do because I like to make sure my answers are right. So I always, if I have a chance, go back and check. We're just running somewhat behind, okay? Now, they also say, one surprising, this is top at 525, one surprising application of integration by parts involves integrands consisting of single terms. And that's going to be the next one we do. Does anyone need me to leave this up here a little bit longer? Anyone? Okay. I'm going to clear that. And this is a pretty simple one, but I think I will put the book in my lap so I can read a little more easily. Oh, and they give... The example, the integral of log x dx, remember I said, we don't know how to do that. Well, yes, we do. We could have used integration by parts on it, but it was easier to do it the other way. Integral of arc sine x dx. No, I don't know how to do that, but integration by parts allows us to. In those cases, your dv is just your dx, and then you let your u be the rest of the integrand and take a derivative of that go go to town. So this is one just like that and what they're going to do on this one is make it an, a definite integral which adds another little wrinkle to it but it's pretty easy to follow. So here is the definite integral from 0 to 1. So you're not going to have a plus c on this one. Of arc sine, I'm just going to write it as inverse sine that's easier for me to write, of x dx. Okay. Now, here's what they suggested. Here's what we're going to do. I don't know how to do this. I don't know any function whose derivative is inverse sine. I just don't know it. 
There's not one that we know of. Okay, so here's what we do. We let u equal the inverse sine. So this is where their little thing of let the u, the dv be the more complicated part. No, in this case, the u is the more complicated part. That's the inverse sine. Okay. And dv is then simply dx. Remember, it has to have the d's in it, so that's it. That's going to be really easy to do. Then the du is equal to the derivative of inverse sine. Now, is that something I hang around with and keep in my memory banks? No, I'm way too lazy for that. Okay? That's nothing I want to waste my poor old tired memory cells on. So I go to the front of the book or the rear of the book. But in the very front of your book, if you got your book, there is that derivatives and integral sheet that's a sort of cardstock material there, a little bit heavier material, and it says derivatives and integrals. The top half is your basic integration rules. So go down the thing until you find they use arc sine. The derivative of arc sine of u, we've got arc sine of x, x would be dx they put have du but ours will be dx over the square root of 1 minus they say u we're saying x x squared don't don't start copying from here and get that u in the front confused with this u here keep it as x's that's what we got to have that's a derivative Okay, now the integral, and integrate both of these, you just get V is equal to X. Okay, now that sure didn't get too much more complicated. Technically, yeah, it is a little more complicated, but you know we can live with that complication. Okay, let me get rid of this heavy book. Okay, not rid of it, just move it. All right, what's your answer then? Your answer is the product of the u times v. Now, here's where the new stuff comes in. That is going to be u times v is x times the inverse tangent, inverse sine, goodness, word. there was a tangent anywhere on the page here, inverse sine of x. Okay, here is the new part. This you also have to evaluate from 0 to 1 because this is a definite integral. You don't usually do that for things, but you did do an integral, you have to do that. Minus then the integral of the bottom line down here. And that would be uh, x dx, the x from here, the dx from there, over, and I'm going to rewrite this, I wish I had rewritten it differently, one minus x squared to the one-half power. Okay, I don't like writing radicals. In fact, I wish I would thought ahead and written it up there, but we'll do that in a minute. Okay? And this is also from 0 to 1. Okay, this is going to be pretty, e well, straightforward. We'll put it that way. That will be 1, when you plug in the 1 there, times the inverse sine of 1. Now, what does that mean? That means the angle, who when you take the sine of that angle, let's call it theta, you equal 1. Well, there's only one place on the domain of inverse tangent where that's going to work. I mean, inverse sine, I keep saying tangent. Inverse sine is going to work. That would be pi halves, because sine of pi halves is 1. So this is going to be 1 times the sine, uh, sine uh, pi halves. This gives you the angle pi halves. So that's going to be pi halves minus 0 times 0. So nothing comes out of that. So here we have a minus sign, and we have this interval to go. Now this time I'm going to rewrite it the way I should have written it to begin with. 0 to 1. And I'm going to write this as 1 minus x squared 
to the minus one half I don't like having things in the denominator either times x dx okay now you might say well do we have to do another integration by parts no we don't you can use a u substitution here let u represent the innermost part of the most complicated part of the integrand and that's the one minus x squared now this is not the same u as this one if you want to give it a different letter you can do you want to use u or something else you can't use v either because we we could use if you wanted to but are are y'all confused if i go back to using u again because we call it u substitution okay this is a substitution one here let u equal one minus x squared right this is just substitution then du is equal to minus 2x dx remember d's have to have the d's okay well we have an x dx not a minus 2x dx so we're going to divide both sides by minus 2 okay excuse me just a minute I meant to bring up a soda but with all the plumbing issues and everything else I didn't get it done so I'm going to need to do stuff to get a little bit of blood sugar hold on not that I need blood sugar I just need some energy I'm running down right now okay now so running out of room too sorry about the chewing here we go don't forget your pi halves that's what you got when you substitute it in here because remember a definite integral you got to get an answer you don't have x's in it anymore that's why you had to do that substitution there too now we have a minus from here but we also have a minus from here so I'm going to make that a plus one half that's that one half right there times the integral now we'll come back and do that in a minute this will be u to the minus one half u to the minus one half because that was our u to the minus one half and the x dx was your negative one half which we changed the sign make it plus one half du now we can do that that's the whole purpose of your u substitution here so let's do it pi halves plus one half oh I forgot something didn't I we need to change our limits well when x is equal to zero u is equal to one when x is equal to one uh oh u is equal to zero uh oh messed up here now we got the big number on the bottom and the small number on top we need to flip them so we wind up losing change that plus that used to be a minus back to being a minus again okay so that's going to be a minus okay one half and now the integral is going to be zero to one that's where the minus came from and then what's the antiderivative of the well I shouldn't have the integral there well I need to okay u to the minus one half du and that would be pi halves minus one half now antiderivative of u to the minus half u to the minus one half I can't talk <coughs> is going to be a u add one to this and you get to the positive one half divide by that new exponent dividing by one half is the same as multiplying by two okay and then that is what we evaluate between zero and one since we got them flipped back over the way they needed to be and notice here the one half and the two go out 
So now we have, finally, to evaluate our answer, the pi halves that we already evaluated minus, when you put a 1 in there, it's just going to be 1. The square root of 1 is 1. And then minus, minus, which would be plus, the square root of 0, which is 0. There's our answer. Pi halves minus 1. All that to get to there. Where in the world is my answer here? Oh, and that's what they got to. Pi halves minus 1. Now they take it one more step. My phone, which has all these messages on it. Okay. Uh, there's, oh, I know who that second one is too, I think. Though I don't. The second one was something from Colorado. That's not, that was actually the first one. Not going to even mess with that one. That's just spam. Okay. Now, I need to go back to oh, my calculator. Okay. There's the calculator, but I need to do a pi half, so I'm going to have to turn it this way so I can get the pi key there. So it's pi divided by 2 minus 1 equal 0.57 approximately. They got 0.571 perfectly fine. I like 57 just as well. You don't have any justification for having a whole bunch of significant digits so 0.57. So they did it right. Good for them. I'm proud of them, aren't you? Okay. All right. We're fully charged, so I'm going to just let that sit now for a bit. So there was example three. All right. They do have a little blurb on technology. Remember, there's several ways to use technology to evaluate a definite integral, and they go into some blah, blah, blah there. I'll let you read that yourself. However, after that, you see, to see how integration by parts is used to prove Sterling's approximation, you can see an article, and they give you an article. If that's, <laughs> if that's where your interest lies, that could be your potential paper topic. The idea can come from the book, but the book can't be the source of, the, of the, your paper. It can be source for your idea for the paper. They give you a source here. You can use that as your source for your paper. Perfectly fine. Okay. Do I need to keep this up here a little longer? Are there any questions on it? Okay. Then I will clear the drawing and go on to example four. Here's example four. The integral, not it's an indefinite integral this time. X squared sine x. dx. Okay. Now, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to get something else. I hate to eat during class, but it's been a very draining morning. I wish I had a soda up here. That was what I would use rather than an animal cracker or a goldfish. Okay. So, again, we go back to our technique. This is the product of two functions. No way it looks like we can do a u substitution or anything else to solve this. So pick the one that would get more complicated if you integrate it, but going to be simpler if you differentiate. That looks like the x squared to me. Sine x, if you integrated it, you get a minus cosine x. If you differentiate, you get a plus cosine x. Hey, <laughs> No more complicated either way. So let that be our dv. So here we go again. Let. Now did someone try to come in? I can't see any blue behind there. Let me just check. I just I hate anyone to be waiting out there. Nope. It would only be Ashton, right? So I don't want him to be away. So let's let u, that's supposed to be a u, okay, 
u equal your x squared. Then dv is equal to your sine x dx. The pen is not writing well today. Then, oh, I'm sorry, I probably shouldn't have said then here. probably should have just said n. Okay. Then, your du is equal to, what's the derivative of x squared? Two x dx, and integrate this one, and what do we get? Minus cosine of x. Okay, don't try to put a plus c. It's just minus cosine of x, because the root of cosine is minus sine. You had a plus sign there, so the root, anti root of a sine is minus cosine. Okay, now. What does this give you? This means this is the product of the two functions. Now u times v is this times that. That's going to be a minus x squared cosine x minus the integral of the bottom line here. Well, there's a minus. That's going to make that a plus. And Let's pull the 2 on the outside, and then you have x cosine x dx. Okay, the dx is from here. The 2 is from there. The x is from there, and the cosine x from there, the minus sign from there. Okay, got it done. The trouble is, we can't do that integral either. But it's a little simpler than the one we started with. Can't do a u substitution. Let's do integration by parts again. Now, do you mind if I use the same letters u and v? Different problem. If you want it, I could use u1 and v1 or something like that. Is that going to be confusing to you? Or can I just use u and v? Okay. Okay, let u equal your x again. And let cosine uh, dv yuck this is so aggravating dv that's supposed to be a v equal cosine x dx okay then du in this case is just going to be simply dx that's easier and here we're going to need to integrate. So if you integrate that, this will be v is equal to it's the antiderivative of cosine. That is going back to being a sine because the derivative of sine is cosine. So that's right. So for the second part here, we do again the u times v. So don't forget the first part. So that's equal to minus x squared cosine x plus 2. Would have been a minus, but uh, that minus cosine there made it a plus. Plus 2 um, times the integral of, I'm sorry, distracted there and forgot where I was okay we're doing this integral here two times what's that integral u times v x sine x okay minus okay uh, the bottom line here the integral of the bottom line, which is just simply sine x dx. Sine x dx. Okay. Now, uh, 
I'm sorry I'm having to stop for a breath because I'm just running out of energy. Okay, minus x squared cosine x. Uh, a little bit of this is coming from the fact that when the rotor rooter man came, I had to put my mask on and go up and down the stairs and move some stuff around. And I got <clears throat> that sort of clogged me up because I wasn't. It sounds really gross, but I wasn't able to hark and spit when I wanted to. And so I've still got all that in my nasal passages here. So <clears throat> sorry about that. If I'm sounding weird, that's why it is. Probably you think I'm weird sounding anyway. So let's distribute the two on the inside here. So that's going to be plus 2x sine x. Okay. Now, what's the antiderivative of sine x? Same as we had here, minus cosine x. Well, we could have pulled that minus inside here and had it there. So that's going to change this to a plus 2 times cosine x. And finally, we put our plus c. Okay, so there it is. Notice what's happening there. Your x squared function is stepping down from x squared, x to the first power, x to the zeroth power, which is 1. Your sine and cosine are alternating cosine, sine, cosine, blah. Okay. The sines, S-I-G-N sines also alternate. The first big, sorry, negative, the second positive. And then you alternate the cosine sign. It was negative. It becomes positive. If it would have been another term there, it would have been a negative sign. But there's not. We're fine. We're finished. Okay. So there's our answer. Okay. Let's see how the book did. There it is. Uh, minus x squared cosine x. Good for them. Plus 2x sine x. Good for them plus 2 cosine x, good for them, plus c, very good for them, okay, now, here's the thing they warn about, if you started, and it was the best thing to do, starting you, and it was, the u equal your x squared and the dv equal to the sine, the trig function here. Then the next step is not a good idea to make the, swap them and make this the dv and that's the u. If you do that, you wind up right back where you started with. So don't do that. Once you start and have the, say, the trig function as your dv, carry the trig function throughout the process as your dv when you have to do multiple integration by parts okay so your dv here was again the trig function your polynomial stayed as your u and that usually makes more sense there's occasionally you'll get circumstances where you might get confused this is especially where your product is something like e to the x times sine x Okay, in that case, it doesn't matter which of you and your V are, it doesn't matter. They're both equally easy to either integrate or differentiate. But if you have to move multiple steps of them, don't be changing those, okay? Be sure you keep the E be the U and the DV being the trig function, or the U being the trig function and the DV being the, U, the E. Whichever way you start, Keep doing it as many times as you need to do that. Okay. So that's what they're talking about at the bottom part of example of page uh, 6, 526, which is under example 4. I'm sorry. I'm just so low of energy. Uh, we only got about a half hour to go, so let's see if I can slug through it. Man, I am. This anemia is getting to me. All right. 
So let me clear. Any one needs that a little bit longer? All right, to clear. Okay. So let's do example five. My goodness, I'm tired. Ooh, this looks like something we would have been doing in the future, but we'll do it now. It's the integral of secant cubed. x dx okay now quite often with ones like this I just want to go to the front of the book and look it up and see if they have a formula for it but since we're doing integration by parts how in the world could you make that work here well it's not going to make a lot of sense for this to be our u here and then that would be our dv because then you'd have to take the derivative of this and that would be 3 times secant squared times the derivative of secant which is secant tangent. That gets way, way, way worse. Not a good idea. Now, here's where the saving grace comes in. Split this into the integral. This is a trick of secant x times secant squared x, if I could get the pen to write, I can't write, secant squared x dx. We just split the secant cubed into secant times secant squared. Now why would we do that? Well, here's one reason. If you let this be the u, that be the dv, what function has a derivative of secant squared? Tangent. So that's why we do it this way. Let the u equal secant x and dv equal So I'm losing focus here. Uh, secant squared x. I mean, literally, I can't focus my eyes well. I'm not me. I'm just losing focus. I'm having trouble. Dx. Okay, so your d's go together there. All right. Now, then, you're going to have to do a du. And that <laughs> gets a little messy. Derivative of secant is secant x. <laughs> secant x tangent x dx. Okay? Goodness gracious, this is getting hard to see. Let me see if some water will help. Here's what I'm hoping, but this is sort of blind hope here. I'm hoping these treatments are going to knock down, and I think they will, the white blood cell counts. Now, hopefully that's going to let the red blood cells rebound. But it's always been my experience that with these treatments, it usually knocks out a few more red blood cells to boot, and we're already low. So that means next week I could be even tighter. Okay? I'm hoping not. But I'm hoping at least getting rid of the white blood cells, that's going to boost my system a little bit. But in the reality, I do believe next week could be pretty rugged too. But anyway, let's pick up from there. Then V is the, you integrate both of these, and the antiderivative of the secant squared is tangent x. Okay, so what does that produce for you? This thing, which is also this thing, would be u times v, that's secant x times tangent x.
this is not a definite integral, so you don't have to evaluate that, minus your bottom line here, the integral of the bottom line. And that would be the integral of secant x tangent squared x. dx. All right. And frankly, folks, that doesn't seem to have helped a lot, does it? Have I barked up the wrong tree here? Um, I may have. Now, we just got to repeat ourselves a few times. Okay. Now, <sighs> goodness, I wish I had more energy. All right, how are we going to do this one? Well, derivative of, and, and remember the rule was, whatever you started with, sort of stay with it. Okay. Uh, so, Uh, this is I don't want to fight this too long okay here's their next step and it's almost another trick okay it goes back to your Pythagorean identities and I don't know if you remember those I hope you do what in the world is tangent squared X well, tangent squared x in one rendition is secant squared x minus 1. Okay, now that comes from the fact, for remember our original one, sine squared x plus cosine squared x is equal to 1. So if you divide everything on both sides of the equation by cosine squared x, you get sine squared x over cosine squared x. That would be tangent squared x plus 1 is equal to 1 over ten, uh, cosine squared x, which is secant squared x. So then you just subtract 1 from both sides, and you have tangent squared x equals secant squared x minus 1. So there's your next step. Don't forget this. I'm not going to haul it around for right now, but don't forget it. Minus the integral of secant x times secant x that's supposed to be a secant x keep doing that secant x squared minus 1 dx okay now this part here is equal to minus the integral of secant cubed x <coughs> minus secant x dx. Now what we did there, we distributed this inside both of those. This could be split into two integrals. This would be minus the integral of secant squared, secant cubed x minus a minus, which is going to be plus the integral, oh, that's a dx, I forgot to put that in there, integral of secant x dx, okay? Now, this is one, I don't know if you remember it or not, this is one we do know. Secant, well, wait, let me make sure I'm saying that right. Yeah, uh, you may not remember it, but it is one. Uh, and for ones like this, rather than trusting memory, I go back to my table. And I know this one will be in the table. Well, the original one would have been. But that is going to be the integral. Go to the front and side cover, that cardstock paper, and see what the 
integral of secant u du is. Okay? And that's what this is. This will be a plus the log. N doesn't write well. Of absolute value secant x plus tangent x. Yeah. Okay, hold on just a minute. Um, I've got to deal with, I think it's the plumber now, so I'm going to put this on hold for just a minute, pause, 